in the previous lecture we started discussing about thin film dynamics and uh, we started looking into the governing equations and the boundary conditions and uh, we uh, tried to identify that what are the boundary conditions for the free surface and uh, in terms of the tangential stress balance and the normal stress balance and the kinematic boundary condition. Then uh, we tried to derive the dimensionless forms of the momentum equations and let us go to the slide to summarize uh, the various dimensionless forms. So, these forms uh, uh, could be derived by expressing u and v, uh, uh, u, v and p uh, in terms of the small parameter epsilon u equal to u0 plus epsilon u1 plus epsilon square u2 and so on. Similarly, v and p and these are the equations. The x and y momentum we derived in the just towards the end of the previous lecture and the continuity equation form is quite obvious uh, that is this one. Boundary conditions, uh, the bottom wall boundary conditions, uh, the bottom wall boundary condition is quite straightforward, the no slip and no penetration and we will uh, now devote significant attention towards describing the boundary conditions at the top wall. So, the kinematic boundary condition, how do we express it in terms of the small parameter? So, uh, let us try to work it out in the board as much as possible and then we will refer to the slides. So, you have this is the kinematic boundary condition. So, what is f dash y dash minus h dash sorry. what is grad f dash right. Where i and j are the unit vectors along x and y, x and y direction and x prime y prime directions are the same. Now, let us simplify this. So, to simplify this, what is del f prime del x prime that is del h prime del x prime right because in f prime h prime is a function of x prime what is del f prime del y prime 1 So, this you can write h prime scales with h 0 and x prime scales with L c. So, when you write it in a dimensional form a dimensionless form it is h 0 by L c into del h del x h 0 by L c is epsilon. So, minus i epsilon del h del x plus j. So, what is the normal vector? For getting the normal vector you also require to calculate 
mod of grad f dash. Okay. So, what is that? It is square root of epsilon square del h del x whole square plus 1 to the power half, right. So, what is n cap in the leading order if you divide this with this and consider that epsilon is a small number, then what will be that? It will be minus i epsilon del h del x plus j plus higher order term, right. Because in the division, this term will tend to 1 as epsilon tends to 0, okay, when you divide this with its mod, okay. So, now you have del f dash del t dash. So, this equation this is actually the original form of this equation, the kinematic boundary condition. Now, del f dash del t dash is equal to what? Minus del h dash del t dash. V dash, you can write this as u dash i cap plus v dash j cap right, where u dash and v dash are the components of the velocity vector along x and y dot with uh, sorry this is scalar, so this vector sign will not be there. So, grad f dash is minus i epsilon del h del x plus j this is equal to 0. So, now what is the scale of h dash h 0 t dash is T c. So, h 0 by T c del h del t plus what is the scale of u dash u c. So, uh, u c into u 0 plus v c into v 0, u 0 and v 0 are the dimensionless 0th order terms for u and v, dimensionless because no bar is uh, no dash is there at the top and 0 subscript means 0th order. So, u equal to u 0 plus epsilon u 1 that because we are writing only the leading order terms. So, as I am telling that these things, this can be worked out by writing u equal to u 0 plus epsilon u 1, but now we have, we are trying to be smart enough to like a priori predict what will be the form without always writing that big form expanding and neglecting small lower order terms. I mean that kind of insight, I mean as we practice more and more that kind of insight should, should come, so that it saves some effort. So, this dot with minus i epsilon del h del x plus j equal to 0. What is T c? T c is yes L c by u c right. So, L c and the numerator you get u c. So, what is h 0 by l c? Epsilon. So, minus epsilon del h del t 
plus u c you can cancel from both the terms. If you cancel u c from here, this will be u 0 i plus v c by u c is epsilon plus epsilon v 0 j dot minus i epsilon del h del x plus j equal to 0. We will require one more step uh, in the camera picture board is almost invisible. So, I have to shift to the side and do. So, uh, minus epsilon del h del t minus u 0 epsilon del h del x plus epsilon v 0 that is equal to 0. right? this is all right. So, you can write v 0 is equal to del h del t plus u 0 del h del x right. So, this is like what is this like? This is like the total derivative of h right. So, the total derivative of h, the total rate of change of h is the v velocity component the in the leading order. That is what the kinematic boundary condition is giving. So, we will uh, summarize this discussion of kinematic boundary condition in the form of the slide. So, uh, you can see that we have calculated the normal vector. So, if you look into the slide as grad f by mod of grad f. So, uh, then j minus epsilon del h del x i plus some term of the order of h square which is small. So, you can see that v 0 is equal to del h del t plus u 0 del h del x. This is the kinematic boundary condition. So, we have expressed the kinematic boundary condition in terms of uh, the small parameters using the lubrication theory approximation. So, this is one boundary condition. Next, we will move on to the shear stress boundary condition. So, in the shear stress boundary condition, see we start with the dimensional form. So, tau dash tau dash dot n this is what this is the traction vector in a dimensional form dot s is equal to grad s sigma dash dot s. So, we have derived this form earlier in the previous lecture at y at y is equal to h h is a function of x and time. So, del s we have discussed is known as surface gradient operator. Keep one thing in mind, we have not written actually it would have been better if we had written here del s also prime, because this is a gradient operator in dimensional form, not dimensionless form, but just for uh, I mean uh, simplicity in writing we have written it just like the normal grad operator, but you have to keep in mind that when it is operating on a dimensional variable, we are looking for dimensional derivatives. That uh, paradigm we should keep in mind. So, grad, so now uh, I will go through uh, the slide because the algebra may be a little bit more involved, but there is an intuitive part of the algebra. Like uh, I mean if you once you get more and more experienced in fluid mechanics, you will realize 
that there is some algebra which without doing the bulwark you can get the essence of the algebra and that is through the scales and how you do that I will show you uh, I mean that will help you to do the necessary algebra without doing too much of bulwark all the time. So, uh, uh, the surface gradient operator del s this becomes i del del x plus del del y into del h del x. See this form this is like you have the difference between the flat surface and the curved surface because the curved surface h has a tangential direction that continuously changes as you move along the surface. So, for that to accommodate that you have the extra term. So, you had the del del x if it were a flat surface. Now, here you have del del y, but it is like a chain rule it is as if like del del y into del h del x where this h is a representative of the variation of the height of the surface as a combined function of x and y. So, it is it is it it is it, it resembles it resembles a sort of chain rule del del x plus del del y into del h del x it is uh, it is it is an operator that sort of gives the tangential derivative by considering that the tangential direction changes continuously because h is a function of x. Okay. Then uh, the tau dash dot n dot s. So, first we note, so we had got the uh, n. So, it is basically you have to do the bulwark, you have to make this tensor product of tau dash. Tau dash you can write the that is the deviatory component of the stress tensor. So, that is like mu into del u i del x j plus del u j del x i all, the, all those terms you have to assemble. Then n is the unit normal vector we have already derived what is n. So, that is uh, uh, what minus i epsilon del h del x plus j that is the n direction. What is the s direction? We have written i plus epsilon del h del x j. How do you get it? Just let us try to quickly do this. I mean these are all basically like vector algebra I mean nothing more than that, but just in case you feel little bit uncomfortable I am trying to do all the hidden steps where, wherever possible. So, you had n is equal to minus epsilon del h del x i plus j. Let us say that s, let us say that s is equal to a i plus b j where a and b are to be determined. Then what is n dot s? Right, dot product of normal and tangential, they are orthogonal to each other. So, that is minus a epsilon del h del x plus b equal to 0. That means, b is equal to a epsilon del h del x. Not only that s is a unit vector that means its magnitude is unity that means a square plus b square equal to 1 right. So, a square plus b square equal to 1 means a square into 1 plus epsilon square del h del x square is equal to 1. That means, considering this as much smaller as compared to 1, you have a is equal to 1. 
and if a is equal to 1 b is equal to epsilon del h del x. So, the s vector is i plus epsilon del h del x j. Okay. So, let us come back to the slide. So, tau dash dot n dot s. Okay. So, you can express this in terms of mu, this assume that it is a Newtonian fluid. You can express this in terms of, see this is the stress tensor, this is the unit normal vector, this is the unit tangent vector. You just make the product as it is, just do the bull work. Then when you do the bull work, you will get the corresponding dimensionless terms multiplied by a scale of tau. Okay. So, what should be the scale of tau? I mean if you work it out, you will get mu u c by h 0, but you can easily get it from your common intuition. Like let us let us write this term. So, tau dash dot n dot s. So, this is equal to some thing into tau dot n dot s. But this tau is the corresponding dimensionless form. So, tau dash what is the leading order term in tau dash? Mu del u dash del y dash, right. So, mu del u dash del y dash, its corresponding scale is mu u c by h 0. So, you can you simply mu u c by h 0 will come here. Okay. So, you can do that without I mean going through any algebra just the dimensionless form dimensional form and the dimensionless form they are related by this scale this must be true. Okay. Now right hand side you have the surface gradient of sigma dash where this is the dimensional surface tension dot s right. So, how do we get the surface tension gradient? Question is this. So, what is the scale of the surface tension gradient? Is it sigma by L c? So, let us try to look into that. What should be it? So, to look into that, let us say, let us assume that the surface tension scales as sigma dash is of the order of sigma 0. That is sigma 0 is the scale of surface tension. I mean typically we could have written sigma c, but sigma 0 is the common uh, notation used in books. So, that is why I have written this. Now, that does not mean that the surface gradient of sigma dash will be sigma 0 by L c. Why? For example, let us say that sigma dash is equal to sigma 0 into 1 plus beta by L c plus uh, beta x by L c, this is a linear term, then you can have a quadratic term, cubic term, etcetera. So, you can tell that I mean are we just doing arbitrary mathematics? What is the basis of taking variation of sigma with x like this? So, let us say that you have imposed a temperature gradient along x, right. Let us say that you have imposed a T versus x linear, because the surface tension will vary with temperature, therefore sigma may also vary with x linearly, if T versus x is linear. So, this is a signature of sigma versus x linear. 
So if this is a signature of sigma versus x linear, then its, deri its gradient with respect to x is beta into sigma 0 by L c, right? Just differentiate this with respect to x. Mm, this is the leading order term. See in the surface gradient only the leading order term will feature in the lubrication approximation. So this will become, so the gradus sigma dash will become sigma 0 beta by L c. So these are the two things that we will remember. So this we will note down in the board sigma 0 beta by L c. Let us go to the next slide. So you can write this is the remember this is the order of magnitude of this right. So you can write mu u c by h naught tau dot n dot s, these are all dimensionless parameters is equal to sigma 0 beta by L c grad s s, uh, sorry grad s sigma grad s sigma dot s okay because this is the order of magnitude of the term the remaining is dimensionless dimensional equal to dimensionless times its scale that is the form that is that we are writing so tau dot n dot s is equal to sigma 0 beta by mu u c what is h 0 by L c epsilon so this you can write epsilon beta by mu u c by sigma 0 into grad s sigma dot s Okay. What is this mu u c by sigma 0? This is the ratio of the viscous force and surface tension force. So this is called as capillary number, a very important non-dimensional number in the context of thin film flows. Viscous force by surface tension force. So we will uh, summarize this part through the slide. So the, you can see the boundary condition equation 13 it is written here tau dot n dot s minus epsilon beta by capillary number grad s sigma dot s equal to 0 where grad s sigma dot s is equal to you can see that chain rule is used del sigma del x plus del h del x into del sigma del y. So this we call this is the shorthand notation we use del tilde sigma del tilde is del del x plus del del y into del h del x. Okay. This is the shorthand uh, notation that we use. Now tau dot n dot s, so if we want to evaluate that, so tau dot n dot s, so the algebra is a bit tedious. I have put this algebra in the slide just to tell you, just to convince upon you that for every work there is a bull way of doing it 
and there may be a little bit more tricky way of doing it. So, if you see here tau dot n we have found out. So, this is tau and this is n, n is minus epsilon del h del x i plus j right. So, the components of n are minus epsilon del h del x 1 this we have derived in a previous lecture. Then you have tau dot n, so you have made the dot product and then tau dot n dot s we have derived what is s also. So, if you do that you can come up with so many things ultimately in the leading order it is del epsilon del, uh, del u0 del y. Now, this you can say without any bulwark because tau dot n dot s is eventually the tangential component of the stress acting on the surface in its leading order in a dimensionless form. So, tau if it was in a dimensional form it would have been mu du dy, but now so mu into u dimension by y dimension. So, out of that now if you write it in terms of dimensionless parameter that mu into y dimension on y uh, u dimension by y dimension will be absorbed and it will simply become del u del y in a dimensionless form. So, this is a dimensionless form of mu del u del y. Okay. So, with all this algebra this is where you land up with which is which is quite intuitive. So, the boundary condition becomes that tau dot n dot s becomes del u z del u naught del y minus epsilon beta by capillary number del t delta sigma equal to 0 at y equal to h x t. You can clearly see that if there is no surface tension gradient at the top, top surface then del u 0 del y is equal to 0 that is uh, the velocity gradient at the free surface of the film is equal to 0. Okay. So, this is tangential stress balance. So, what boundary conditions we have discussed through lubrication theory kinematic boundary condition and tangential stress balance. We are left with the normal stress balance. So, now we will discuss the normal stress balance. This is the founder, final boundary condition that we apply for our analysis before we can solve uh, the whole system of equations. Uh, normal stress balance, so there is a particular note that we have put here and uh, this note is important from a physical perspective. Normal stress balance is a bit different from shear stress balance. This is simply because while balancing the normal stresses, we have to take into account pressure which acts always normally to the interface. Apart from this, we have to include the effects of Laplace pressure that is the pressure difference across the interface caused by surface tension and surface curvature. This also we have discussed. In addition, there is something that we have not yet discussed that we have this is a thin film. When the thin thickness becomes very small ultra thin where intermolecular forces of inter interaction come into the picture then the van der Waals forces of interaction become important and that gives rise to an another additional component of a pressure like quantity which is called as disjoining pressure. So, that uh, we shall denote that as p dash extra. Okay. And I will show you that where in the mathematical formulation you put it. Now, the disjoining pressure what is the formula and expression for that? Uh, it is a also a function of the film thickness. It will typically scale with 1 by h to the power n where n uh, is typically an integer. So, where h is the film thickness. So, if the film thickness becomes very small and small this will become this disjoining pressure term will become very very important. Now, expressions for disjoining pressure how they are derived and all those things I mean uh, uh, that is basically within the purview of the theory of the molecular theory of uh, like uh, the corresponding interaction forces and I can refer to you a very good textbook if you are interested that intermolecular and surface forces by Israel Israelichi Veli. It is a very uh, authentic textbook 
you can intermolecular and surface forces. So, you can read that textbook to uh, get the details of what it is, but in terms of using it in the continuum approximation I will continuum formulation I will show you where to plug in that term in the thin film analysis. So, that you can work out that uh, use that expression to work out a thin film problem. So, you can see here that P dash minus P atmosphere P dash atmosphere minus tau dash dot n dot n this is the viscous part that we discussed this is the hydrostatic component is equal to sigma dash by r plus P dash x ok. Now, how do you get this r from n actually from vector calculus you can relate the radius of curvature with the uh, divergence of the normal vector. So, this 1 by r if r is dimensional then this is the actually delta dash dot n delta dash as I told that we have not written delta dash in the slides. So, this is the dimensionless uh, sorry this is the dimensional uh, divergence. So, this 1 by r. So, now let us see that how we can put uh, various scales uh, here. So, uh, let us try to put various scales. So, this term we have tried to simplify uh, by usual scales. So, let us uh, the final result is given here, but I will try to see that uh, like what form we get uh, by putting various scales. So, P dash minus P dash atmosphere minus tau dash dot n dot n is equal to sigma dash by r dash or uh, sigma dash by r, r is a dimensional radius of curvature plus this one. Okay. So, P dash is P c into P right, P dash atmosphere is P c into P atmosphere this is tau dash sorry, tau dash is equal to tau c, tau c is mu u c by h 0 into tau dot n dot n this is equal to what sigma 0 into sigma by sigma 0 by r into sigma right. plus p x is there okay so these different terms so you will get p minus p atmosphere minus what is pc just tell what is pc from your notes what is PC? Yes? Mu u c epsilon square l c. So, you multiply by 
or you divide both sides by P C. So, mu U C by H 0 into epsilon square L C by mu U C into tau dot n dot n is equal to sigma 0 by r sigma into epsilon square L c by mu u c. Okay. plus p p dash x into epsilon square L c by mu u c. So, now let us look into this term mu u c gets cancelled, h 0 by L c is epsilon. So, 1 epsilon gets cancelled, right. Then uh, here you can express r in terms of L c, you can non dimensionalize r in terms of L c. So, you can write r c So, uh, if you write this r in this particular form that is also ok, but uh, I mean sometimes we write r non dimensionally, we will see in the slide how we write r non dimensionally, but before that you can see that here also the capillary number appears which is more important mu u c by sigma 0. Now, to non dimensionalize R, if we define a non dimensional R as R by L c or L c by R whatever, then this will become epsilon cube uh, or in other words depends on how, how we actually non dimensionalize. So, better we will keep it in this form. So, this particular form is uh, sigma by r into 1 by capillary number into epsilon square L c. So, you can make a suitable choice of the scale, suitable choice of the non dimensional r such that this epsilon square you can absorb through L c by r it becomes epsilon cube. So, that is what is shown in the slide but that is again it depends on the choice. So, uh, you can clearly see here. So, how do you come up with the choice of a suitable scale for r? How can you come up with a suitable choice for the scale of r? So, you have So, let us write this as del dash. Okay. 1 by r is equal to del dash n. So, what is del, uh, del dash dot n? What is del dash? i del del x dash plus j del del y dash dot what is n j minus epsilon del h del x i.
So, this you can convert del del x dash to del del x and you can convert del del y dash to del del y. How do you do that? So, del x dash is equal to x into L c. So, I del del x 1 by L c plus j yes 1 by 8 0 8 0 is epsilon L c then del del y dot n right. So, 1 1 by L c comes out there in this expression in that 1 by r. So, that L c will cancel with this L c ok. There is a 1 by L c common you can see here that 1 by L c will cancel with this one and this 1 this 1 by epsilon this will go in the numerator to make it epsilon cube ok. So, if you come to the slide you can see that p minus p atmosphere minus epsilon tau dot n dot n is equal to epsilon cube by capillary number into del dot n these are all dimensionless sigma this is dimensionless sigma ok. Now, how do you calculate the term tau dot n dot n and epsilon tau dot n dot n. So, tau you can express in terms of the velocity gradients the non, non dimensional velocity gradients n we have shown that how the n comes. So, tau dot n dot n you can see that it comes of the order of epsilon square. So, that is why see many times ignorance is a blessing in disguise as I have told earlier and again I am repeating. See this term being of the order of epsilon square and this term being of the order of 1 actually it will not matter if you do not have this term because this will be of the order of epsilon square. So, fundamentally it will be wrong if we do not write that term, but that term will not be a dominant term. So, and not only that del dot n. So, there is a del dot n why do we require the del dot n? Del dot n we require because you have this epsilon cube by capillary number del dot n. So, del dot n del is i del del x plus j del del y dot n is that minus epsilon del h del x i plus j. So, this becomes minus epsilon del square h del x square ok. So, then this becomes uh, P s minus P atmosphere is equal to this. So, this is the expression that relates that is basically the previous expression where that del dot n is substituted. So, uh, note that in the boundary conditions we have term we have retained some terms involving epsilon or higher powers of epsilon. So, you might argue that since these are higher powers of epsilon why have we retained these in the boundary terms this reason we have already discussed in the context of lubrication theory. What is that reason? The reason is that these terms in actually incorporate certain other scales which are yet to be determined like u c for example. So, look at look at this term. So, if you look into this term you will realize that you have the capillary number where you have mu u c 
by sigma 0. So, in that there is a u c unknown. So, that u c may be as large or as small to make this term comparable to p minus p atmosphere even if epsilon is small, because you do not know whether that u c is large or u c is small. So, you have the scales and these scales see the beauty or physics of these problems is that these scales are not so much uh, describable a priori. These scales depend on the physics of the problem. So, what is the dominating factor? Is it the body force? Is it the boundary condition along y direction? Is it the boundary condition along x direction or, or, or uh, whatever? Is it the surface tension gradient? Like what will be u c for example, if you have a surface tension gradient? If you have a surface tension gradient, then what will be u c? The surface tension gradient then will dictate what is uc how will you find out uc you have like the surface gradient of surface tension coefficient is equal to the ta the tangential stress and the tangential stress scale is mu uc by h0 so from there you will get the appropriate uc so depending on what is the dominating factor you will get the scale established from that parameter so, when we describe the lubrication theory, we do not say what is UC, what is VC, all these, because these are apparently unknown generalized parameters which can only be affixed once you know what is the physical situation governing the problem. So, The important question is that exactly what we should solve for. See, there are too many equations, there are quite a few boundary conditions. So, what we actually solve for? So, we saw in the lubrication theory, one of the main unknowns is pressure. Here also, pressure is an unknown, along with that, the film thickness is not known a priori. Once the pressure and the film thickness is known, all other quantities can be easily deduced. Hence, our aim should be to find out an equation for film thickness using the available equations and boundary conditions. We will take it up in the next lecture. Thank you very much.